My name is Lane Baker. I work in Washington, D.C. for the National Park Service. I'm the Chief of Law Enforcement, Security, and Emergency Services. I worked in Yosemite for a number of years and then been in the Everglades and then transferred to Yellowstone. And I uh, gave up bison jams for car jams in the traffic of Washington, D.C. I'd like to believe I've always been a relatively healthy individual and I'm required to maintain a fitness level. For my position, I get annual medical exams and I also have to pass an annual physical. Early last year, 2010, I had gone off to a training program with the Park Service and I thought maybe I'd just eaten too much because it was one of those residential programs and they feed you really good food. But um, that feeling didn't go away and I started increasing my exercise level and I still felt like it was really rude that the year I turned 50 that all of a sudden my belly starts to bulge like they tell you is going to happen when you turn 50. And uh, I could actually see where there were symptoms that I had ignored. And it wasn't until they had progressed enough and I could no longer try to attribute it to a monthly thing because it didn't change on a cycle. It was, it was relatively consistent and getting worse. I decided to go in and get examined by a physician. I had a Monday morning appointment and she had noticed some abnormalities and she sent me to get a CAT scan that afternoon. So the next morning I called her Tuesday morning from work and that's when she told me what my diagnosis was. When I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, to say um, that I was shocked would probably be an understatement. I was smart enough to say to the doctor, can you fax me that paperwork that tells me what those results are because I really wasn't absorbing it very well. And then I pretended to work for a couple of hours while I waited for my sister to wake up and I don't even think she had a chance to get a cup of coffee before I hit her with the news. And you know, she immediately became my champion and I was able to call good friends. And that was just, um, it meant so much to me to have those kinds of contacts available to help me work through that process because we were on a very fast road from that moment forward. My sister Terry knew people that work at Stanford and um, I was able to scan the results that I had received from my doctor and I sent those to her electronically. I got diagnosed on June 28th and we were able to get an appointment here on July the 9th. I believe that you know, God put all those things in order because I know now what a phenomenal physician Dr. Barrick is. He already had built a team. He brought part of that team into the room that first day and he outlined the type of chemotherapy treatment that we would do post-surgery. And we left there that day with a surgery appointment. And before we even got out of the town of Stanford, we were called back to say, we're gonna try to get you in on Tuesday as opposed to Thursday. And that made me feel very good about what I was going to receive when I got to Stanford. I got out of the hospital on a Friday and we started the chemotherapy the following Friday. He did prepare me for what the chemo would be like um, by telling me what a lot of people experience, but he also said that the protocol I would be on would be a more frequent protocol where I would get chemotherapy every week, but for lack of a better term, the cocktail would be given in a less intense dose more frequently so that it wouldn't devastate my body and knock me flat, but it would still be strong enough to take on the cancer cells. I was in chemo treatment here at Stanford for 18 weeks. I have to admit there were times when I wondered if I was gonna be able to make it through the cancer because of what the diagnoses can be or the statistics can say. But I do find myself wanting to be an advocate. So when I'm talking with my friends and they start talking about, you know, I've got bloating or you know, I'm developing this midlife pooch and my exercise isn't working or I gotta stop eating chocolate or whatever it is, I talk to them now and say, you know, that might be what you're thinking and it could be that you overate, but pay attention to that and maybe next time you go see your physician, have it checked out because the earlier you catch it, the better your survival chances. I, um, I finished up my last chemo treatment on the Friday after Thanksgiving in 2010. And now, almost in June, I'm six months cancer free and expect that that's going to continue. These guys are part of my support team from Amy, my almost nine-year-old friend 
who uh, is the daughter of Jen, standing right behind her. Jennifer and I have been friends for years. To my sister who opened up her home to me, my sister Terry, she opened up her home to me and to all my friends that came to try to help us out. To the donkey, which we have named Kick-Ass because he's kicking cancer's ass, <laughs> who came with me to every cancer treatment and to every doctor's appointment. Um, to find that support group because it really means a lot to have somebody to help you have as many people as you want to come and help you get through that.